Thank you, and uh, good morning, Speaker, to the Premier. PC leader Doug Ford and the entire Ontario PC family were all moved by the events of yesterday. Our thoughts are with the victims, the families, and those affected at Young and Finch here in Toronto. We want to thank the brave first responders. Speaker, we want to thank the brave first responders and the EMS teams who continue to work tirelessly on our behalf. Mr. Speaker, would the Premier like to share her sentiments with the House? Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I know that uh, everyone in this House uh, joins with the families and the victims, families of the victims, friends of the victims, um, and all of the people who are affected by this, and as I would say, Mr. Speaker, we all are. Um, let me just read the update that I, uh, that I gave to the, uh, the media this morning. Um, I said this morning, Mr. Speaker, that as the city wakes up, there are families, a family and friends of this horrible tragedy and the victims themselves who have survived whose lives will never be the same. Our hearts reach out to them, and we desperately want to give them some comfort. As Mayor Tory said last night, that desire to comfort can perhaps help us all in Toronto and beyond to be a bit kinder, a bit more gentle with each other today and in the days to come. In my role as Premier, it is my responsibility to ensure that any provincial resources that are needed to cope with the ongoing investigation and security measures, that they are available. And I want to report to Torontonians and Ontarians that that is happening. I was briefed again first thing this morning. Our provincial security officials continue to work hand-in-hand -hand with federal and municipal officials. The OPP is in constant touch with the RCMP and the Toronto Police Service officials who are involved, and, and who are involved in uh, the ongoing investigation. The, uh, the people who are involved in the identification of victims put extra teams on duty last night to move that processing along to help families get information sooner and to help ease those painful hours of waiting. I spent the afternoon yesterday with Mayor Tory in North York. I have nothing but the deepest admiration for the Toronto police officers, firefighters, paramedics who responded so quickly. They responded so professionally, so compassionately to the tragedy that unfolded. These are brave, highly skilled men and women who desire our heartfelt thanks. I also had the opportunity to spend some time last night at Sunnybrook Hospital, the hospital that received the largest number of victims. Again, we want to thank every one of the paramedics, the nurses, the doctors, and all of the health personnel who responded so professionally and so well. CEO Andy Smith emphasized the sad reality that his team is prepared for a situation like this because they practice and train for such a day, hoping it will never come. But when it did, and calls were made to off-duty nurses and personnel to, come in, personnel to come in, they were already on their way. They knew exactly what had to happen. So thank you to each of the professionals, each of the neighbours and passers-by who helped an injured person. Thank you to each and every person who lent a hand. I heard a question on radio this morning about whether our city, our province, our country will be changed because of this senseless act of violence. The lives of the families and friends of the victims are changed forever. But our collective job now is to find a way to grieve, to acknowledge that pain and stand with those who have lost so much, and then to make sure that the life of this vibrant, good city and province goes on. We are capable of deep compassion and understanding in Toronto, in Ontario, and in Canada, and we will be called upon to summon all of that in the days ahead. Given the unique circumstances, it is my uh, decision that when the third party comes for their First question, I will allocate, uh, give some time for them to make a comment as well. 
and I would come back to the, minute, to the uh, leader to offer him an opportunity, if he cho so chooses, to say a few words, and then we'll move into question period as we have to. <laughs> leader. Well, thank you, Speaker. Um, I think we've, uh, uh, first of all, I want to thank the Premier for that update. I think that was a uh, thorough and respectful update. Uh, we uh, genuinely appreciate the work of the first responders and the EMS teams that are out there. There are many questions that will be answered over the coming days, and we look forward, uh, Premier, to uh, continued updates uh, as, uh, as the province and as the uh, uh, municipality learns them. And so our thoughts, our hearts ache for the families and for the victim speaker. Thank you. The uh, House Leader of the Third Party. Well, Mr. Speaker, uh, these type of things are never things that we think are going to happen in our backyard. But unfortunately, we do find out that we live in a world, and the world, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, things uh, unfold in ways that are not pleasant for many who are directly affected in it and, and not affected directly. I think there's a couple of things, and the Premier, I think, summed it up well, is that our police forces and the way that they acted yesterday makes us all proud that the reaction was in order to calm the situation down and to do what was right when it was coming to apprehend the individual. Uh, and I think we can all be proud of that because I think it speaks volumes to the training that we do to our police, to the ambulance people, to the, uh, to the paramedics, to uh, the fire department and everybody else who showed up. Again, kudos. I think the Premier summed it up quite well, along with the, uh, the leader of the uh, Conservative Party uh, here in the Legislature. Uh, they acted totally professionally. But the other thing that I think we are all impressed with is how the public reacted. Those people that were there on the sidewalk, those people that were there on the streets, they were there doing what they could in order to be able to make things better and to try to administer first aid. In fact, a good friend of mine, David Sword, happened to be on site when it happened. I found out after. We haven't talked about it yet uh, because he's still uh, going through probably some of that trauma. But I want to let you know that Andrew Horvath and you Democrats uh, stand tall and proud with our uh, police forces, uh, forces and emergency services and what they've done and with the citizens of this province. Uh, Andrea is actually on site there this morning. I uh, thought she would go and uh, pay respects uh, directly on site. So uh, our uh, party, along with our leader, our congratulations go out to those, who were, those that were on site. And we grieve for the families, quite frankly, that have been so so devastated by what happened yesterday. Thank you. I appreciate all the comments and your latitude for, to allow me to, uh, to make sure that we all have a uh, word to say. Uh, I will now then return to the Leader of the Opposition for his supplementary question and recognize that this place is unique and we need to ask some questions of the government and that will take place. Supplementary. <laughs> well, thank you, uh, Speaker. I'll now speak in my role as the uh, interim leader of the official opposition and continue our duties in that, uh, in that respect. So back to the Premier. Uh, Premier Ontario, ratepayers and taxpayers want answers. Mr. Speaker, when did the Premier become aware that Hydro One gave their CEO a $6 million salary and a $10 million severance? Thank you. Minister of Energy. Minister of Energy. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, pleased to rise and to respond to the question put by the, um, the uh, leader within the House um, from the Conservatives. Um, Mr. Speaker, uh, when it comes to the executive salaries at Hydro One, um, we recognize that these are high compared to the vast majority of Ontario salaries, Mr. Speaker, and we'll continue to remain committed to um, work with Hydro One on their regulation accountability and, and their transparency, Mr. Speaker, through our government's involvement as a, as a majority shareholder, Mr. Speaker. And, and I know, um, Mr. Speaker, we will continue to 
um, work with uh, Hydra One because, Mr. Speaker, we have seen a change in that company. Um, the executive team has found $114 million in savings, Mr. Speaker. Answer. They um, entered, uh, you know, a voluntary winter disconnection program before we had, as a house, had to implement that. So, Mr. Speaker, we'll, we'll continue you. to to monitor. Thank you. Final supplement. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Back, Mr. Speaker, back to the Premier. Mr. Speaker, does the Premier approve of both the Hydro One CEO's six million dollar salary? and his $10 million severance. Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, when it comes to uh, costs, Mr. Speaker, um, the board, um, the Ontario Energy Board, that is, Mr. Speaker, they, they set rates. So by talking about firing the CEO of Hydro One, Mr. Speaker, that doesn't take anything off of anyone's bills. So. The board, Mr. Speaker, is the energy sector's independent regulator with a mandate to protect ratepayers, um, and that's how it's going to continue to deliver on that mandate. Um, for instance, Mr. Speaker, last, um, last fall, the Ontario Energy Board capped the portion of executive compensation Hydro One Electricity customers are required to fund at 10 per cent of base salaries, saving ratepayers $30 million over this year and next, Mr. Answer. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, the Ontario Energy Board will continue to monitor, will continue to work with Hydro One to help them become a better company, Mr. Speaker. Thank you.